I'm back and Robbie's gonna help me here a little bit uh, and occasionally when he's running a little bit of sand falls out and which in reality makes no sound if you listen to sand <laughs> falling it makes no sound but then we get a little creative license and this is something we would do so Mari's climbing up and then he gets to the top and he collapses that would be Murray <laughs> and then we have Wayne who's a werewolf so same props as Winnie, because they're both werewolves. So this is where performance comes in to play. So we saw Winnie delicately dance into her tea party, but her dad here is pretty scared to be climbing up this rickety tower. And so what you wanna do is make sure you have some intrepidation in what you're performing. So he might sound something like this. <laughs> <laughs> how he performs, you know, his climb up the ladder. So we will play back to you now. Obviously, the, the the scene does go longer, and you actually get to see more of it. But just the piece that we did, and again with the mix. Obviously, you're not going to hear every little thing, but you'll see that there's certain element of the creek and all of that. How what we do plays into part of the whole collaboration. You'd rather be listening to those putrid new songs? What happened to Michael? Roll your corpse ashore. Or old Mick Werewolf had an axe. You shouldn't be up here, Drag. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so then that sort of the cut of the sort of the footsteps. And obviously there's hundreds of characters of feet that we do, but going on to the props, one of the things that we what I was doing was a, certainly a note from the director, Drew Allier, as well as the sound designer, was that Drax's cape is very important. It's very slick, it's very dramatic. When he flies and when he makes big gestures, it's a wonderful way to sort of animate him and give him some life. So we work together on this. Some stuff you can do on your own, but this is something we definitely work together on. Um, and we're gonna give you a little demonstration of how when he jumps over to rescue his grandson. <laughs> Action. <laughs> that's <pretty> funny. <laughs> so that's really you can see that it can be a performance, you and, know, and, and how fun. we work together is a kind of a give and take and um do we want to hear this one back? Yeah, I think again, we should play it back. Again, the music is a big play in this, but there's little elements. We did a little uh, cake movement for Dennis, too, and uh, we'll hear it back. You know what? He's not going to fly. I told you, Papa's always here for you. Oh, my devil. <laughs> <laughs> How does Dracula feel about his cape being pink? <laughs> well, you know, I think he probably likes it. If you look at it as a picture, it's sort of a silky, um, yeah. 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 I, I don't know how he feels about Doesn't it. Paint the new black? It's how it sounds. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> you know, I think this is one of the most interesting things. You should look at it, actually. Seen, you know what? It? I went for total oh. authenticity. Yeah, he, yeah. I think maybe a little magenta, probably. but. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm sorry, what were you saying? I'm just saying, I think it's, this is the most interesting thing I've seen today. Oh, yeah. great. I didn't yeah. realize that great. you How much still did the sound effects that That's way. Great. Well, this is actually what we've been saying to a few of the yeah. groups. It's one of the few, the technology has changed so much, but our element is one of the few things, it's, it's still being done how it was done when they made movies 60, 70 years ago. And, and radio. Yeah. And I suppose, and I suppose, once you record it, you can always enhance it. You Completely, and, yeah. and 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 the way we record it has certainly changed, and we have many, many more options of tracks available to us. But just imagine your imagination, how great it has to be, because you have to go out and look for all these different things. Yeah. And I'm sure over time you evolve and you sort of know, you know, you have an instinct what will work or not work. Well, what you're you doing, pointing man? at something great that we were talking about today is that in every film there actually is, uh, you know, problem solving. Right. Like, 
Uh, this particular one, the sound, the sound supervisor came to us and said, you know, we really want all of the monsters and humans to sound different. We, we really think it's important that there's a differentiation. And you know, if you're walking down the street and you, you hear a high heel, it has a particular sound and it doesn't sound like a Doc Martin or a work boot, right? They're very distinct. And so the monsters were also wanting to be created as very distinct footstep sounds. So here we have a little freeze frame of the lobby and you always have these characters on, in the background. And so none of them are necessarily featured players, but you know, they really contribute to making this other world that is Hotel Transylvania. So for, for, uh, for instance, this is uh, One Eye and he's got his little One Eye family. They're kind of, he's kind of like an octopus. He's sort of very squishy. So we and, and understand <laughs> I'm on a table and not on a floor. I'm trying to, but we, Shammy's is like mm -hmm. a Foley artist's greatest friend. Um, they have this amazing ability to sound very visceral and they retain. So we, we use Shammy and the chat, you know, for these feet, they, they're also great for doing gory blood and guts and this kind of stuff that they're, it's a wonderful prop. That was what we would use for that. And then you've got your mariachi band here. Right now they're playing, but normally they're skeletons walking through the lobby. Here's one of the little skeleton gals up here. So, you know, every now and then you have a skeleton passing and that's kind of, you know, getting, well, we actually did have some real bones, this little skull, but we also found these pig's feet were pretty good. And we could do a, trying to get like a heel toe sound, but you would use the, the, the little bones and the pig feet and get the element of a, of a skeleton walking by. And how about, Sarah, like this is a gargoyle. We see the gargoyles. Gargoyles, which, you know, are stone. So um, I would, it's interesting how they would make a bit, have a bigger piece and basically use that. And at the same time, you're trying to get the same kind of the way they walk, which is heel toe. So you want to get an element and you wouldn't have the sound of the table underneath it. But yes, again, that was, and these things, you know, obviously as they came up, Robin and I were like, oh, what would be good for that? Oh, maybe we'll try this, maybe we'll try that. And you're right, like there the, are some instincts, but you learn every show you work on, you still, as long as you're still open to finding out new things. And it's funny, because even like Bigfoot, we're thinking, oh, he should be big and wavy, but also he's kind of furry. So we use pillows, we use big pillows, feather pillows, so that, our mixer would put in a bottom end and create literally these big fluffy feet falling. So um, how about the fish, Sarah? What would you well, use the fish, for that? So some of them had webbed feet. So we, we actually would use uh, the flippers or we could these wonderful gloves that were kind of rubbery and squeaky. And you sort of, again, create this weirdly different kind of, and at the same time, we don't want anything, don't, it's okay, but we don't want anything to be too really scary. Um, so, you know, pine cones were used at times. There were antlers for Bella, who's the villainous thing. He has these incredible claws. So we would use some of these antlers. They're fake, they're not real. No, no, no deer was, was, was heard. There are sounds in the forest. Um, uh, and uh, pine cones or little, things or you know we have just many many options. You can really options. see that out of there at least 50% probably more are actually organic uh, instruments and that's um, part of bringing it back to what we do is we create the organic sound effects. There's a real difference an audience you guys are a pretty sophisticated audience but you know the difference between electronic sound and something that's real and that's really what we have been able to create is those human sound effects that support the entire soundscape. Do you have a big archive of all your collected? Somebody organic? just asked us that question. We we don't have we're not we don't have a, an effects library. Our whole purpose is to perform it in character for the particular project. There are sound editors that have big libraries, but our particular intention is that, and that isn't to say people haven't actually recorded some foley and put it in libraries. But what we want to do is give each film, each project, its own, it, not, it doesn't come out of some library. It's created specifically for that. That, you know, we may use, as Robin said, we could use the same prop, but you use it with a different intention and with a different way it's recorded, it can sound the same. So, no, we personally do not have big effects libraries. Is that common or do some Foley artists maybe go, you know, I could save a day if I just pull the footstep out of this library or this library. They Foley do. artists don't say that, but editors yeah, do. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> but what editors don't have is they don't have this incredible wealth of props and shoes. I mean, 
Sarah and I literally have garage fulls of, uh, you name it. Uh, you know, it looks like our our stage right now looks like your grandmother's crazy attic or something like that. And if you know, I may it looks add, like a garage sale. Right. And if I may add to that, is I mean, one of the things that I feel like, yes, ultimately anything could be cut, but we really are the sound actors. It is, there is intention and performance behind it. So, um, you know, every character, whether it's animation or simply they, when they're angry, when they're intimidated, when they're shy, you walk with different intention and you perform it that way. So I hope that they, you know, I'm sure, yes, an art footstep is missing somewhere and they need it, they can grab it. But my hope is that there would always be the intention to bring this sort of human, organic aspect to it. How does, a, how does a college student going to school studying do what you guys are doing? This is so unique. Well, um, they are, you, are you basically asking how do we get into this and how does yeah. someone train for yeah. it? Did you well, enjoy well, doing like, it when you were like little? Yeah, yeah. yeah when well, you were I mean, a college most student. Us, you know, most of us came into it via acting or music, dance. Yeah. dance. Uh, I actually, you know, actually my, um, one of my, my godparents was one of the original voices on the Lone Ranger. So oh, I wow. first heard about sound effects when I was just a little tyke and he was a smoker. So he would take his little cigarette pack. It used to come in cellophane and he'd go, Robin, come here, listen to this. And he'd put it right near my ear and it would crackle. <laughs> and then he'd go, let's just say that we're sitting by a campfire together, you know? <laughs> and so he really, from the time I was little, got my imagination going that something that exists by sight doesn't necessarily exist by sound. Yeah. And so you can take, there's a certain magic and craft to it to yeah. take one thing, close your eyes and transform it by storytelling into something else. And yeah. that's when we're doing it, that's the best of our job. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, but there isn't, as I said, my parents were radio producers for the BBC and I, without ever thinking that I was gonna be a Foley artist would help her. And you know, I sort of went through the acting route. But, there isn't really a school for Foley. People learn about Foley, they go through a film program, they do touch a little bit on post-production, and typically they sort of scramble, whether it's UCLA or USC, mm -hmm. they sort of scramble to get their films Foley. There aren't really schools for it. It is a fairly unique sort of boutique thing. Um, as Rob said, probably the best way is to intern. I mean, I, I had some experience, I came sort of years in the business, somewhat self-taught, I learned from great people I worked with, but there isn't really, it's not like, I wanna be a Foley artist. In fact, I would probably suggest in today's world that you would be more than a Foley artist, look, be an editor too, be, because. I think that's what she's pointing at. You know, when we were coming up, um, getting specialized was what's important. Mm -hmm. And what I'd say to a college student is now that you're coming up, actually having a broad skill in everything mm -hmm. is so much more important than being a specialist. You know, being able to access your symphonic thinking, being able to like go out and record, mix, create, write, do it all, that's really important. The specialties, you know, we're mm -hmm. we're hoping to ride out our careers gracefully and take a bow. <laughs> but and, but <laughs> I, 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 I do hope yeah. I, I do hope that, that Foley does live on because I do, I really think I as much as the technology changes and, and they are able to, there is that basic there is a performance and there is and I yeah. think that Maybe it won't be as widely used, but I think there is, and for certain filmmakers, it's very important. Yeah. And a lot of what we do is for foreign distributions because that has to go. You know, they, the uh, music and effects have to go over to whatever language. So I'm hoping that it will actually last beyond. Even our seeing what you guys are doing now is just. I imagine your memories are so valuable because somebody says something and you're like, boom, and this kind of glove makes this kind of sound, and somebody would pay you for that. Right. That would be your archive, basically. That would be my, that my archive is, yeah. is in my head. And, yeah. in and, your head. And, no. your head. And, when somebody asks about a database or something, yeah. it's like, yeah, it's right here. Yeah. Right. And you know what's funny for me is I actually have a feeling about things. So, you know, I don't even consider that I have a, a great ear, but I have a feel for something. Yeah. And I think that is from the acting background. So mm -hmm. I came up as an actress and I, I think like knowing story, knowing the feeling, knowing yeah. what wants to wants to live inside of a moment, mm -hmm. 
I think that's super important. Has, has it happened that you just can't nail down a sound, but you know, if you mix this song with this vibration, with this other sound, absolutely. then you can yeah, so like get that one limited. sound you're looking yeah. for. Limited. Well, as, and that's yeah. exactly what it is. There are things, and that is the beauty with technology expanding. We can do many, many tracks and we can get, you know, get it's almost there, but on another track, if I just add that little squeak at that one little spot, yes. So that's the one beauty of technology is that We've had a lot of challenges, but we are able to ultimately, you know, figure it out. Plus, we're not alone. We've got designers, you've got editors. Right, you it's know, a very you've collaborative. Got, you right. know, it's, it is a stone soup situation yeah. where yeah. everybody puts in a right. little bit of something. Now, we've been talking about Easter eggs through uh, every panel. Did you throw in any kind of Easter eggs in the recording? <laughs> um, what's all trying to it too? We are very polite, so we don't do things like that. We used to back in the day. Um, no, I think we've, we've, we've been... No, I don't well, Let's say we weren't recording this. <laughs> what would your answer be? Especially unusual sounds. We would say nobody would guess. I want to hear about the time. Easter eggs. <laughs> No, we don't no, have we any Easter eggs. We don't have any Easter eggs. No, no, I no guess Wilhelm that's... screams. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, uh, are Lobby? you speaking from the Foley perspective? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So from the Foley perspective, probably the most challenging uh, character in this was the Blob because he doesn't have feet. He doesn't really have <laughs> hands. He's just, and yet they want him to have motion and character and. And so it was a, a combined effort to come up with many layering of tracks. And some, that came some in of very what we handy used. With, with our mixer, which is a very vital part of our, of our crew, the person who records it. He has the technology, he can put low end, he can EQ us, he can make us, if we do a smoking cue and a breath, he can make me sound like a man, he can pitch it down. Mm. So um, we actually filled up a bottle, a sparkless bottle with water and, and for one of the elements, and he pitched it so that it almost sounded like globular, not like watery. Well, you, you know, when you go to the like water a, tank and you go the bloop, 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 bloop. Mm -hmm. but, but the way okay. he managed to pitch it, it, it was that. And then we had another element if he touched stuff, it had to be very tactile and sticky. And So we use like, um, you know that pompadour stuff, this hair gel that makes your hair <laughs> stick Dippity straight dude. up? Yeah. 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 And yeah. we just, Dippity every dude. time he touched something, there would just be that layer of slime stick. So wow. again, he was he was definitely a um, he, a character we we built on with many tracks. But initially we were like, mm. how does a wobble? What do you you know? So we get, it's and yeah. with animation and a lot of these things. I mean these monsters you've never seen before. So you sort of have carte blanche, but at the same time without it sounding human with a, you know realistic with humor with not just so all of that. And we also it. have to give a lot of credit to the people we're working with, like the supervising sound editor, the editors, the sound designers. They're cutting stuff at the same time we're performing stuff. And, and also, yeah, they will come to us with, you know, with a lot of direction. They're the sort of the liaison between the director and us. You know, we want Johnny to have this funny squeak sound. We want this character to do this. So we get some direction and then as a crew, we sort of collectively work out what we're going to do. and. Sometimes yeah. they... And also, um, like Jeff Rebay is the supervising sound artist on this, and there were a couple of days where he would bring in like incredibly crazy things. Like we had at one point, like a giant weather balloon on the stage. Right. It was so big, it would come from here to there, and we needed a bunch of people just to <laughs> hold it, you know? So a lot of times, you know, you'll stop by a Foley stage and you just, you have the most unique and strange yeah. things. And the funny thing is, it didn't sound very good. No. <laughs> it was a huge thing. And it didn't end up, you know, so sometimes, a lot of times what you think is gonna work doesn't work, and, and, Something like celery works. Well, celery is a fantastic thing. I mean, if you have a, and if Robin, like, you know, there, I think there's a magician pulls the heart out in one mm -hmm. of the scenes and combined with the squishy sound and a big, I mean, that's a recorded heart and stuff. That can sound, that you just broke somebody's neck there. Uh, <laughs> not in this movie, though. Yeah. Um, so celery and chamois are, are definitely a big part of our were arsenal. You, were you the only Foley artists on this? And yeah. how long of a schedule did you have? Um, so we were the two credited Foley artists. I don't think anyone else worked no, on no. it. So um, I, yeah, I think we one. are it. Um, Generally, you would get uh, somewhere from 15 to 20 days. When you're working on live action, usually that comes within a two, three week period. 
this started like last April, we would get a scene and work for two days and then we might have three weeks off and come back and work for three days. And so it was about a 15, 16 day schedule, schedule over but it was three or four months. Because the way animation, it, it comes in when it's rendered scene for wow. scene. And so yeah. it was quite, a lot of times we were, as we didn't, we, were, we had no idea what this, it looked stone. And then we'll come back later and actually they're on a hardwood floor. So sometimes <laughs> you get the final mm. rendering of animation. But yeah, it was very scattered. But I think we had about 16 mm. days uh, for, for, from our aspect. Whereas a movie like Spider-Man, which we did, we've been doing the rebooted Spider-Man since we've had 20 to 25 days because of not only live action, there's also a lot of CGI in that too. So. Yeah. Sounds like though you really have to scramble on your job sometimes. Mm. Like if sometimes they come with you, you with assignment, yeah. you just have to probably spend 24-7. Well, it's not 24-7 because we are a union. They would have to pay us. So, <laughs> and I will say, the one, so, uh, we are unionized. Thank you. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so, uh, but, but what you're saying is, you know, it does take a lot of thought, and it is extremely physical what we do. It's We're very tired at the end of a nine-hour day. Um, sometimes things are very heavy lifting. Um, and so, so yeah, and also we work in television and the schedules they uh, have you do in TV are much more intensive. So yeah. what you would normally get to create on a film, you know, 40 minutes, uh, you could, would get a week and on TV you get a day. So on those kind of days, you're right, we don't sit down, we don't talk, we just go, go, go. Now, I, I asked in animation, what do they do to, to separate themselves from staring at a computer and moving faces? I imagine what you do, even when you walk out of here, your, your, your ears are always hearing something. So how do you separate yourself? Do you listen well, to Mozart or something? Or, you know, I, do listen, do? I do listen to music. I listen to a public radio. I mean, I think definitely when I started, the very first years, I was very conscious all the time. Yeah. Let's put that stuff. I think there is a, so you get to a certain point where um, I'm not jumping out to go to the movie theaters. I have to say that's like I love I used to love movies that you work at. I mean, I I because I work with it all day. It's like going to a movie theater. Is it's 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 not that I don't do it, but yeah, I would I would read a sense. book or something. That for me is more. But you know, you're also pointing at you know you can really get overstimulated, and there are yeah. sometimes at the end of the day for me it's too much. So I when yeah. I'll go home, I'll say you know I have a husband and, and a. 14 year old daughter who love to listen to music and sometimes I'll just be like guys I just, I just really <laughs> needed to be quiet you know and they respect that but you're right sometimes you really have to turn your ears off because you are listening all, all day long. That's true. So I find, tend to read actually. Do you yeah. find that when you go to see a movie that you start listening <laughs> for these sound effects and how that artist might have come you know up what? with that's the... interesting we talked about this earlier if you will, and we got to wrap it up. So this is the last question. Well, right. I have to answer a dentist appointment. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> if, 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 if you can't hear it and you don't notice it, you've done your job well. Mm -hmm. Unless it's a Quentin Tarantino movie where he wants it like absolutely yeah. in your face, and yeah. you know. So no, actually, if if you just go to a movie and I'm not very aware of the foley, then they've actually done a good job. Yeah. If it sticks out and it sounds weird. I will go, oh, that's a little weird. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what's funny is now, because the original, like, you know, karate films huh. were low budget, and so that wasn't great sound effects. But now, if you don't put those sound effects in, a, in like, a karate fight, people are like, hey, where's the whoosh whoosh and the shoo shoosh and yeah. everything? So. You ever go to one of your own movies and people are talking? It's like, hey, hey, I can't hear the footsteps. <laughs> I want to hear the cape. Quiet. <laughs> I haven't done that yet. No. no. But thank, thank you. 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 Thank you.